Hello there Libra and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mary Sue and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today I'm doing a very special reading for you um, because uh, I feel like with the retrogrades and the eclipses that we had from November until really February 3rd, um, as a sign, you were just kind of like really affected by those. And so uh, we have no retrogrades between now and April 29th. So I'm doing a special reading so that we can see what energies you can expect overall for the next three months. So we'll take a look at February, March, and April, each of those separately to see what you have in store for the next three months. And I really do feel like it's kind of like this special opportunity um, without any of the retrograde to kind of like make some progress in some area of our life that we would like to make some progress in. So um, I'm going to start with the Oracle cards and then we'll move to the Tarot for more details. Um, so I'm kind of laying this out as I'm talking to you. So um, we can save some time <laughs> and I have them out. Um, and if you're enjoying the content that I create or resonating with the message, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider like, commenting, or subscribing. Okay, so let's get into your reading. Let's take a look first at the overall energy. So we have Brown Bear Spirit, Take Time Out, Goddess of the Moon, and then Watching Clouds, Lie Back, Rest, and Relax. Really interesting because you have two cards here that are kind of showing that you're needing over the next three months to kind of like pull your energy back from, you know, uh, maybe working really hard um, or maybe from some relationships. You know, this is kind of like hermit energy, like going within because we have the moon card here. The moon is our subconscious. It's like you're being called to go within. If you're looking for answers in your life, sometimes we get this energy because it's like a call to go within. We all have the answers within us. It's about taking the time to step back from the busyness of our lives as much as we possibly can and spend more time just kind of like being instead of doing because we are human beings, right? And not human doers. Um, so it's about spending more time being. And, um, you know, just like having time to reflect, perhaps meditate, journaling. Um, you know, it's um, just pulling back your energy from doing so much for others, perhaps, and just being with yourself. So let's see what we have in February. We're going to start off with um, Moth Spirit, Surrender Now, and Hostilities. Now, hostilities can be that energy from other people, um, people that we work with, personal relationships, that type of energy. It can also be internal energy, you know, just kind of like those um, energies that are within us. You know, we always have... Uh, the, the two sides of us inside, we have the divine masculine and the divine feminine. The divine masculine is all about working, producing. The divine feminine is about loving and nurturing. You could have even hostilities, you know, within yourself, a mental anguish over, you know, looking at things that you have done or have had done to you in the past and kind of like wrestling with that within yourself. So I feel like this, you know, energy of taking a time out of going within a little bit is taking a look at your fears and anxiety about, you know, things that have happened in the past and just kind of like reflecting on them, healing them allowing them to come up, to process through them, and then letting them go. Because we have this moth spirit, surrender now. It's about going on this journey to look within. And Libra, I know that you have already done this work. <laughs> you have spent a lot of time with it. So it's kind of interesting that this is coming back up for you. It's navigating by the stars. Follow your bliss. Okay, when I get this... I really, uh, when I read that, the first thing I, I thought of is, 
you know, taking a good look because, you know, I said something about not working so much, not doing so much. Um, some of you may be pulling back your energy from your work, however that may mean for you. So maybe you're putting in, you know, like 60 hours a week and you're like, okay, I got it. I, I, I've got to start leaving <laughs> the office earlier. I have to only work 40 hours or get it down to 50 hours. Some of you may be trying to take your work and travel with it, like going remotely because it's Navigate by the Stars. Um, I know during the pandemic, some people have had that opportunity to do that. You may be trying to take advantage of that, seeing if you can't like travel um, and spending more time maybe even in like if you live um, like in the northern hemisphere and it's winter right now like even trying to travel to some place that's warmer where you can kind of like and I'm saying that because you know you have like the hammock it's near you know like a beach there's a sailboat or a lake you know like getting closer to water getting closer to nature um you know, like if you live in a city trying to get more out into nature in some way, maybe doing your work remotely in a new environment. Um, it's as if you want to take these hostilities and transmute them. That is what you're being called to do. To take the hostilities of, you know, I really feel like that is mental. And I'm saying that because it, the the sword is you know in his hands there it's almost as if it's mental um anguish is the word that i'm getting um it's mental anguish that you're trying to work through and that could be you know through all the retrogrades you you kind of like some of those emotions maybe from childhood trauma or relationships in the past or you know, just things that have not worked out for you, you're kind of like, okay, I've, I've got to go figure this out. Navigating by the stars is kind of like, you know, just listening to spirit, you know, surrendering to your spiritual journey, listening to spirit and trying to figure out like, where am I supposed to go next? I feel like a lot of you have a let you know, relationships, jobs, careers, you know, I'm seeing that over the like the last six months, especially towards the end of 2021. You know, you left situations in the past, but you may not know exactly where you're going next. And that can be a really difficult energy to move through. It does put you in this energy of being really fearful, like, oh, I left that, but the new hasn't yet come in right should I run back to the old because I at least I know what that is you know but navigating by the stars is moving forward it's this energy of moving forward but also like you may not know exactly where you're going you're listening to spirit you're listening to your heart you're um you know following your bliss <laughs> so it means that every day you know, you may not know what the next day is going to look like. I took a trip once um, across country and I didn't really know where I was going. I got in the car and, um, you know, it, 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 it was a, a difficult time in my life. <laughs> but I got into the car and um, I only knew where I was spending the next night. Okay, so I had a reservation for the next night. That's all I knew. And then I would wake up that morning and I'd be kind of like, okay, where, where am I going today? Like I, I literally moved every day or every two or three days, you know, but I never knew what the next day was going to bring. I mean, I made the reservation. Usually, you know, I would get somewhere. I would kind of like, you know, meditate. I would kind of think about, okay, where am I going tomorrow? You know, look at a map, try to figure out, okay, where do I think I might want to go tomorrow? And then I would make the reservation for the next day. But that, I did that for over a month. And it was kind of like, it was really freeing because I really did not know where I was going. I was 
literally navigating by the stars and ex and enjoying the experience, you know, of meeting new people, learning the history of the places that I went, doing some journaling, meditating. You know, it was kind of, um, you know, this energy of I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> and um, that's kind of scary. I'm not saying everybody can do that, but if you can kind of surrender to the idea of, okay, I'm really going to listen to my intuition. I'm really going to try to follow my bliss and see where it leads me. Um, so let's see what we have here. Okay, and I have my deck here upside down, but we're going to read them in the uprights. Yeah, you know, you have a crossroads, Libra. This is your February. You have a crossroads. It's a major crossroad. Um, you have the judgment card and the two of wands and the lovers, which is also the old tarot choice card. The judgment card is you judging, <laughs> you getting to choose which path you are going on. It's also about spiritual awakening, about awakening to the fact that you need to surrender, that you need to navigate by the stars. You need to follow your bliss, you know? Um, it's, and I, when I say need, I, it's not me saying that. It's kind of like your soul is calling you and saying, here, here is the call, you know? Um, and it's about whether you are going to answer the call or not. This is the hero's journey, you know? Um, this is you opening up to the idea of, wow, I am being asked by the universe to surrender to my bliss, to surrender to the journey ahead of me and not know exactly where it is, you know, um, almost like navigating by the clouds, right? Like pulling yourself back from the doing and really getting into the being and then choosing you know, choosing yourself, choosing, to me, the lover's card is choosing yourself over whatever else is going on in your life. Like understanding that this is a call to go within and to find the love that you have for yourself. For some of you, this is about a soul, a soulmate, you know, perhaps a twin flame. Like taking a really good look at that relationship. And I'm not saying that, you know, for some, it could be that, you know, this reuniting type of energy. Um, I'm really trying to keep this more of a spiritual thing. But I think you are taking another look at this relationship, at the wisdom that you have gained from it. At, you know, perhaps going within and looking at you know, what was good about this situation and what was not. And the stuff that was not good, why you allowed it. Because one of the things that we have to do in order to heal something is to understand that, you know, when we're in toxic relationships or codependent relationships, that we played a part in it. And that's really difficult, right? Um, it's so much easier to just put blame on somebody else. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that when we can love ourselves, even though we allowed um, situations in our life that were not really in alignment with who we are or who we are becoming, when we can do that, when we can love all of ourselves, the, the parts that we love about ourselves and the parts that we don't love so much about ourselves. That is when we are really stepping into our courage, when we are really um, not being governed by our fears, but being governed by our hearts, by our love. Oh, wow. This is really... Um, oh, sorry, Maggie. I'm sorry. Um you know, this energy of just loving yourself. I feel like you're coming into this energy of loving yourself, 
the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the creative parts of yourself. You know, it's just like just loving all of yourself and which really puts you in such a higher vibration. It's almost as if you're finishing out this energy of, you know, all that releasing that you've been doing because, oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah, you take this deep dive. I feel like in February, you take this deep dive into, into your emotions. Into, you know, it could be that you went through this traumatic event and then you just kept busy for a while <clears throat> because you didn't want to have to deal with it. You didn't want to have to deal with the pain, with the emotions of what this situation, um, how it played on your heart. And so you kept doing, 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 and it's now all of a sudden, you know, I don't know why, but you know, for some of you, you may actually have, um, you know, some kind of li little health hiccup that you're, you're almost forced <laughs> to be. For a while you can't do anymore you know um i know this one time i was like do do doing right and then i twisted my ankle and the doctor was like you have to stay off of that for you know two weeks or whatever um and i was in a boot and all that and i you know i mean it it, it was definitely an annoyance but the worst part about it was that I couldn't do, do, do. All of a sudden I was sitting there and you're by yourself and you're kind of like having to look at this inner turmoil, right? You have nothing else that you can really do. And I wonder, you know, for some of you, it's kind of like, yeah, look at underneath this. We have the snake spirit, time to heal. It's almost as if, you know, the universe says, okay, that's it. That's it, Libra. You have to sit and be with yourself and you're going to be like, uh, I don't know, but you take this swan dive. I'm going to say a swan dive. You know, you go underneath, you go into your emotions, you take that deep dive and then look at what you have. You have the door to spirit and stepping into power. You are strong beyond measure. The thing that we have to realize is that when we are willing to face our fears, when we are willing to face the fear monster head on, to look at all of the parts that we love about ourselves as well as the parts that we don't like about ourselves and still love all of it and choose to love ourselves, it doesn't mean that you might not want to grow or progress in some areas, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, I'm still going to love myself, even though I have, okay, for me, it's kind of like, I have a real fear of going to like social events if I don't have other people that I know to walk in with. Like, it's really hard for me to walk into a room by myself or to walk in even with people I don't really know, okay? And I know that that hinders me, right? It, it holds me back from doing some things I would like to do. But I love myself. I love myself anyway because of it. Um, I understand that it's only because I always want to feel safe, you know. Um, and so I still love myself for it. And when I can, you know, I will try to go with somebody or know that somebody's going to be there. But I've also gotten much better about walking in by myself because I just say, you know what? Nobody likes walking in by themselves. It's not just me. There's very few people that like walking in by themselves. So it's kind of like, okay, so what? I'm walking in by myself. But once I get in there, I know I can, I can chat it up with just about any stranger, you know, at least for a few minutes um, and it'll be fine. And I think that that's what you're coming into is this energy, um, you know, this energy of loving yourself and not, um, not being critical of yourself, overly judgmental, you know, stepping in this energy. You can be judgmental about yourself or you can love yourself. You get to choose. And you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to choose loving myself.
instead of being in this hostilities of not liking the parts of myself that I wish were different, you know? And that could be even, you know, sometimes, I mean, especially women, we can, you know, have that, you know, body image issues or something like that, you know, it's kind of like, no, I'm going to love, I'm going to love my, you know, I'm going to love all of me, even, you know, my thighs that I haven't liked, you know, since I was a kid, right? Um, so it's this energy of just like stepping in and loving yourself for all the good, all the good that you are. All of you is good, Libra. <laughs> Stepping into that energy. So let's see, what do we have here? Yeah. Ten of Pentacles. Wanting something long-term. Wanting, oh my goodness, wanting to transform something. Here is this energy of somebody from the past, I'll have to say. You know, <clears throat> wanting to transform uh, something, possibly a relationship that you've had in the past that was toxic, you know, trying to manifest, you know, something in this situation, trying to manifest a love, a love connection. But it's about having to make sure that you're transforming this, going into this deep dive of the toxicity of this relationship. And if you're sitting there going, I'm not returning to that person. You know, you have free will. I'm not saying that you have to return to this person. It's about going deep into the toxicity of that relationship and looking at the part that you did play, the part that you may not like about the part that you played in this relationship that allowed the toxicity or, you know, it, it, it's about taking, it's about taking accountability for your part in this. And it could have been just a sliver, Libra, right? But it's almost like the universe is saying, when you even look at that teeny tiny sliver, and you say, okay, I allowed this in my situation into my life. And this is the reason why. And I understand that now. And I still choose to love myself. And it's also coming into this energy of looking at this situation from the lens of love instead of the lens of fear, of not looking at every single relationship as if it could be toxic of surrendering that part, of realizing, wait a minute, I've healed what allowed this toxicity into my life. And since I've healed that, I looked at it, right? I looked at it, I processed it, I healed it. I'm, you know, I'm aware of it. I'm, but I'm also not allowing that type of energy into my life anymore. When you take the deep dive and look at it and allow yourself to, process your your part of this toxic relationship then you can't you you can choose not to have that in your life anymore it's when we don't want to accept that we had anything to do with a codependent relationship no it was all their fault you know oh yeah you know oh they have some major issues you know like when we cast it all off onto the other person or we go into you know the the, oh, you know, they did me wrong. I didn't do any wrong. They did all the wrong, right? But that doesn't heal. That does not heal the part of us that allowed that to occur in our life. And we all have this. So it's not, it's, it's not something, you know, it's just like me <laughs> not wanting to walk in by myself, right? But once I realized, you know, nobody really likes walking in by themselves. <laughs> it's kind of like this energy of like, yeah, we all have a little bit of this. So bringing, shedding light on it, accepting it, trying to heal it, process it, understanding it, maybe understanding why you're like that, and then loving yourself, even though you have this is the first step into manifesting a true love connection. 
you know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that whatever we are putting out there in the form of who, how we feel about ourselves, we are going to mirror it. We're going to attract that same type of love into our life. So if you are not willing to take a look at, at your own issues of, you know, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, you know, fear of um, not being, you know, somebody not loving your thighs, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that you're bringing to the relationship, that is exactly what you are going to get from the other person. It may be a different issue, but it's going to be that same type of energy. When we clear out our own energies, when we clean them up and we can look at them, we can love ourselves, even though we have some, you know, some hurts, some pain, but we're processing it. We're cleaning it out. It's not, you know, it's not shoved down. It's not kept in a closet. It's, it's out there, right? and we're still loving ourselves, then we can attract somebody that, yeah, they're at the same level. They're aware of what their issues are, and they're also working on them. They're also processing them. They also love themselves, even though they may have experienced a toxic relationship. For some of you, um, especially with the judgment card here, I do feel like you may be transforming yourself. And if you have a twin, if you feel like you're in a twin flame connection and have been separated from that person, they could also be transforming themselves. And so it's kind of like you could end the cycle of toxic behavior, but it would mean that you have to shine the light on this, right? You can't just say, oh yeah, we got rid of that. You know, you'd have to really kind of transform it. But if you could, then you might be at the, at the point where, you know, you could reunite. That is, you know, that's, all on your free will that's you know that does not mean that you do have to reunite <laughs> right so let's see what april has to do uh we have koi fish spirit there is always enough narrow path tread thoughtfully and third chakra archangel uh shamuel so the third chakra is really about your core beliefs you know healing whatever allowed you know, toxic energies, to be in toxic energies, to uh, to really transmuting that, cleaning that out and realigning yourself with your core beliefs. And I feel as if, you know, once again, we have desert passage underneath here, narrow pathway. I feel like for some of you, you may have been single for a while. You've really been working on this, like not shoving this under the rug. And Libra, um, you know, that is wonderful because that is really difficult. That's, you know, really having to look at your fear monster. But coming out of this and understanding there is always enough. There is always enough love in the world. You know, there is, um, you may have come on this uh, road for a while where you have been by yourself. You may have, you know, kind of gotten to a point where you felt like, um, oh, I'll never have love again, you know, that type of energy or all love is toxic, you know, those types of energies. But in April, you're coming into this energy of realizing that there is always love. There is always enough. You know, if you are willing to share your high vibration love with somebody else, that you will attract somebody that has the high vibrational love. If, um, you know, when we're not willing to look at, um, you know, the pain that we have, then it's as if all we do is attract more toxic people in our life. And I feel like you, you really learned that, that, hey, you know, I thought I was cleaning out, you know, all the toxicity, but I just kept attracting toxicity in other people. And then it was kind of like, yeah, I got to go, I got to go do this deep dive. I got to clean this stuff out so I can get somebody, you know, I can raise my vibration and attract somebody that is also of a higher vibration. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Ten of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Seven of Swords. 
understanding that when you're not willing to look at your own um, faults or issues, Understanding that when you're not willing to do this deep dive and look at, you know, your own pain and issues and traumas, that you're really holding yourself back. Like when you're not willing to be vulnerable enough to share, you know, you see the snake is holding the egg. Uh, it's like all the secrets. I'm not, I'm not sharing my secrets, you know. Um, but when you're not willing to share um, your you know, your, your fears, your anxieties, your joy, your dreams, when you're holding back your vulnerable parts of yourself, then you're really kind of shortchanging yourself because all you're going to do is attract people that are also holding back. So it's about understanding you have to be vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there. You have to take the actions of letting go, right? Um, I always think that this is interesting, you know, she's like on a parachute, right? And it's kind of like, you have to let go of your vulnerabilities in order for the sun to shine, in order for the joy and the abundance to come in. And that's what you're doing in April. You're planting the seeds of the things that you want to grow. You know, you're looking for something that is long-term. For some of you, you could have been like, casually dating for some time you you ended a you know a relationship a long-term relationship with a soul partner and um you may have been casually dating for some time um because you kind of got into this energy of yeah well i'm not doing that again or you know um you know everybody out there has their issues <laughs> um and, and now you kind of like, you know, people do have their issues, but I can still love them even though they have their issues, right? Doesn't mean you have to be in a romantic connection with them. Um, okay, I want that one. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be in a romantic connection, but we can love each other, okay? Even though we all have parts of us, right? We all have a parts of us that... We're still working on. So let's see what we have here. I honor how I want to feel. I love this because, you know, when I don't want to walk into a place by myself, I'm still honoring how I want to feel. I want to feel confident um, and just like, oh, I'm going to rock this. I got no problem walking into this party or event or whatever by myself, right? I honor how I want to feel. And when I honor how I want to feel, I can also heal the way that I do feel. And I'm recognizing it. And that is part of the healing process is recognizing our feelings and understanding that, hey, I want to feel this way and then trying to step into that energy of loving myself because I feel like I don't have the, the confidence to walk in by myself. And yet at the same time, trying to step more authentically into an energy of how I want to feel more confident when I walk into some arena by myself. So it's a lovely energy of really trying to Plant the seeds for, for the future, for uh, the person you are becoming, of understanding that, you know, this is a process. I'm not going to go from A to Z overnight. It is a process. It's something that you may be working on long term, but it's also something that's going to help bring in somebody that stays with you long term a long-term committed, grounded relationship um, that is full of love, that is supportive, is understanding, that loves all parts of you, Libra, and that you love all parts of them. Um, and, you know, really being willing to work on this relationship. Really interesting. You know, in the past, you, you could have been... Um, Either in a situation where you were judged, you know, critically, 
or you could have been even in an energy of judging yourself critically. And I feel like you're you're healing that part, understanding that, you know, all of the parts of me um, all need to be nurtured in some way. You know, with the seven of pentacles, it's, you know, not just planting the seeds, it's also nurturing the seeds. And nurturing those seeds that, you know, um, of love for yourself, you know, nurturing the seeds that you know are going to grow and manifest into what it is you want down the line for yourself. Of understanding that if I stand in an energy of being judgmental, right, or being with people that are judgmental, that that doesn't, that does not foster something that I want long term. It's taking a look at what energies do I want for myself long term and then planting the seeds for those energies. You know, um, do I want relationships that are judgmental and focus on my, you know, weaknesses or pain or issues? Um, do I want relationships that are, are judgmental or do I want relationships that are loving? And the thing that we have to do is get into that energy first of loving ourselves no matter what, <laughs> how we feel about some of the things that we are dealing with. But understanding that I'm going to love all of me. Um, I'm not going to judge myself for the things I don't like about myself. I'm going to love myself and understand that I'm still working on myself. It's I'm a work in progress, right? I'm a work in progress. The person that I'm with is.